Hi there, my name's Vince, I'm a composer based in the UK, and in this video I'd like to show you my approach to creating 30 and 60 second music cutdowns in Logic Pro X. This video is mostly going to be focused on the technical aspects, such as keyboard shortcuts and some hidden Logic Pro features that you might not know about. And at the end of the video, I'll just share some general thoughts on how I think about making the edits as musical and as natural and as useful as possible. By the way, I'll make a list of all of the keyboard shortcuts that I mentioned in this video, and I'll put that down in the video description so that you can use it for reference. So here we are in Logic. This is an empty project which I created from a template, which contains three markers. They're at 0, 30 and 60 seconds. And to create a marker, you simply use Control Option Apostrophe. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to create a marker at exactly 20 seconds, you just you could input the time code here, Control Option Apostrophe, and that creates a marker. Click over here to open the marker menu, and then uh, right-click the marker and select Lock Simpty Position. And this just means that when you change the tempo of the project later on, the marker is still going to stay in the place that you put it. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some stems. Now that I've got my stems in the project, I'm going to try and line them up to the grid. So I need to input the tempo of the track and the time signature, and then just get it so that the downbeat, the first downbeat of the track lines up with this point here. So. So we can see here's the first hit of the track, and we want to get that over here. So I'll just drag it along. Whoops, I'll just drag it along. One thing I like to do to just finesse it a little bit to make sure that it's really on the grid and it feels the click feels nice and musical against the track is to select all and use the nudge feature of Logic, which is option left and right arrow. And you can barely see it on here, but it's actually nudging the regions slightly left and right. To set the amount that the tracks are nudged by, you go to Edit, Move, and then Set Nudge Value. And as you can see, there are quite a few options here. So at this point, I can do an underscore version just by listening to the track and identifying the key melodic instruments and muting those. So for example, I'll mute the clarinet and the dulcimer here. Once I'm happy with my underscore, I'll move on to the 60 by saving a project alternative, which I'll call 60. It's a really good idea to use project alternatives in this context, as it means that you only have to use one set of audio assets, the stems, and they can be shared across the 30 second, 60 second, and any other versions that you want to create. It just saves hard drive space. At this point, I can start assembling my edit. There are a couple of ways to manipulate this number of audio regions simultaneously. You could use groups. So I could select these tracks and go create group, and then select editing selection. And that means when I click on one, it will select all of them. And any, any edits that I make to one region will affect all of them. Personally, however, I tend to just use the marquee tool, which I've got set to the secondary tool by clicking here. And that allows me to very rapidly create cuts, um, just drag sections of audio around like this. Um, and I can also use the marquee ruler, which I've set to be visible in this menu to create incisions in the audio or to select large chunks of audio. So to create an incision across multiple tracks, I can just have the track selected, you click on the marquee ruler and then hit uh, backspace and that creates a split in the region. Generally my approach is to get the basic edit done like this just by chopping sections of the track around and not worrying about individual transitions too much because I know I'm going to come back and finesse those later. One thing you might want to do when you're starting the edit is just identify any key structure points in the track. Um, and often I can do this just by looking at the waveforms. So for example, this is where the clarinet comes in, so that's probably a key moment in the track. So I'll just take a look. I'll zoom in slightly. And here's the key downbeat. So visually, if I create a few more cuts like this in the track, then I can map things out and I know where the different sections are. So as I'm working through the edit, maybe on this side, and then I think, oh, it wants to go into something else here, I can quickly grab a section 
and just bring it in into the place where I think it's going to fit. So now I'd like to talk about how I do the endings using markers. So let's just imagine I'm happy with this edit um, and I've got it roughly to a place where I think the track is ending in about the right place to hit the 60 second mark. So... So now all I really need to do is just trim the regions so that they end at exactly 60 seconds and add fade. So here's how I would do that. I can use option, comma and full stop to jump the playhead to the markers. And so I'll jump the playhead to the final mark of the piece, hit command A, and then I'm going to hit command T, which trims the region at the playhead. And I can just delete those. So now they all end at exactly 60 seconds. I'm just going to select these regions, hit T A to switch to the fade tool, and then drag a fade. And that's the basic thing done. What I'll tend to do is I'll also drag the fades down so it's a shape more like that, which I find tends to create a more natural musical tail off. That's a little severe, so I'm just going to drag it back a bit. Perhaps a bit more. That's nice. Another keyboard shortcut that I use all the time when performing edits is apply default crossfade. So selecting the regions that I want the crossfade and then control option X and that creates a small crossfade. You can set the amount of crossfade time by going into the audio preferences and going to the editing tab and just playing with this slider here. With the beginning of the edit, oftentimes I'll just have the track start on beat one. Even if there's a little count in or a little lead in, I'll just chop that off so the track comes in straight away. However, in this case, if we just have a listen, it feels like the lead in is actually quite important to the core melody. So what I'm going to do in this instance is just shift everything along so that that's included in the edit. And then I'll just take off a little bit of time at the end to compensate. So we'll just shift that along. Um, another keyboard shortcut that's useful here is semicolon, which just uh, moves all of the currently selected regions to the location of the playhead. Then we're going to just have to redo this uh, ending again. So once again, I'm just going to jump to the marker. Then I'm going to select all, command T to trim, and then I'm going to apply a fade to all of those. Another bonus keyboard shortcut when you're exporting the track um, is to select all of the tracks with command A and then do Command U to create locators that are the same length as the audio regions that are selected. So once you've done that, you can just hit Command B to export. When I'm happy with the 60, I can go on and create another project alternative and call it 30, and then go through the process again using this marker as a guide for the 30 second mark. By the way, the nice thing about Option Comma and Option Full Stop is that it also sets the locators. So in the case of the 30 second, you've already got the locators set to a 30 second chunk there. Often the way that I'd approach the 30 is by looking at the later half of the 60 second and using that as the starting point. So for example, select those, delete, command A, and then semicolon brings it here and we can begin to just maybe chop down this section a little bit so that it'll fit. The other keyboard shortcut that I wanted to mention, which is especially useful if I'm coming in on a hard transient, say I was starting the track uh, here, and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be any clipping or any pop when the music pops in. Um, I've got the tracks all selected here, and I'm just going to use the region area here in the inspector and just go like this with the mouse and create a little one, and that creates a tiny fade on all of these. So there you have it, there's how I create 30 and 60 second cutdowns and of course you can apply this technique to any duration such as 15, 20 or sometimes 29 and 59 seconds. Something you might find useful when thinking about the 60 is trying to tell the story of the track beginning, middle and end. So having the cutdown contain representative sections of each part of your music track. With the 30 second it's a little bit different, you probably want to go straight in with something really strong. So maybe just jump cutting straight to your big section of the track first and just letting that run with a little bit of a build and then that's it. 
Similarly, with anything less than 30 seconds, I just want to get straight to the point. So no ambiguity, no intros, no extended outros. Just try and have the meat of the track there, a really strong musical statement. And of course, it's always worth checking with the client, just talking to them directly about what it is exactly they're looking to achieve with the cut downs uh, for their particular project. If it's a library company, they'll often have documentation about this that they can just share with you. Finally, it just goes without saying that this is my particular way of working. There's really no hard and fast way to do this. And if you learn just one new keyboard shortcut, then it will make me very happy. At the end of the day, it's all about just streamlining the process so that you can free up mental space to be focused on the more creative parts of the issue, which in the case of cut downs is about making pieces of music that really sing and really are expressive with no distracting jumpy edits or strange musical structures that catch the ear. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you on the next one.